Hi everyone! Thank you for joining me for Rise and Shine! Woo! <laughs> so excited to be alive. Let me grab my drink real quick. So, good morning! I got my protein shake here. Let me know how you guys are feeling today. Alright. I'm like at the end of my detox, uh, two weeks detox, and I am so sick of drinking this protein shake. I have two of these for two weeks now. Um, two, two of those every day for two weeks, and I'm just sick of it. <laughs> but anyways, I feel good though. I feel so good in my body. Um, I feel like I got all the nutrients that I need. So, okay. So I want to share with you guys a couple amazing stories that happened for me since yesterday. Um, you know, from my relationship breakdown that I had this earlier, a couple of days ago that I've shared with y'all about being ghosted and, and all of that fun stuff. I, you know, it all at the end of the day really all comes back down to our relationships with our parents. A lot of our patterns in romantic relationships actually stem from our relationships with our family. So specifically with your mom, with your dad. And I realized that who I was being when it comes to being in a relationship, when I'm connecting with someone, a potential partner, I am fully not being who I really am. Like this joyful, confident, energetic, like powerful woman that you see on Facebook when I'm building my business. It, that's not the woman that you experience when I am going on dates with people. I shift into this powerless, this uh, shy, this kind of insecure version of me. And I didn't own my voice, I didn't speak up, I didn't communicate my needs. Like that was the version of Miko that a guy with experience. And I really started to questioning and ask like, okay, where did this come from, <laughs> right? Where did this come from where I am not owning my power and I'm not owning my confidence and my voice, specifically my voice, where in my life that other people have my voice right now, right? Or have power over me. And I was speaking to a coach yesterday and she really supported me into seeing that my mom has my voice, right? What do I mean by this? So growing up, there were so many traumatic experiences. I'll share one with you guys on here. It's that where when I spoke up, I experienced a lot of pain. So one of them being, I think I was in elementary, elementary school and I got home and back then my mom still took showers for me, right? I was still a little kid. So she was taking off my clothes and she was taking off my underwear. And I guess there was yellow stains on there. And then she got mad and she asked, Miko, did you wipe? And I said, yes, I wiped. And then she didn't believe me. And she pretty much shoved that underwear into my mouth. So imagine how traumatic that was, that experience was for a little girl who didn't do anything wrong. At least I didn't think I did anything wrong. I was being honest. I spoke up. I told the truth. But the re repercussion of that was a very painful consequence, right? So that was one moment that I know absolutely my mom has my voice up until this point. Right, because I kind of told myself this story that if I were to speak up, if I were to say something, that I would feel pain, that I would feel rejection, whatever that story was. And then there was another time that um, I remember sitting on on the dinner table, getting we were having cup noodles, right, ramen noodles, and then we need the hot water to cook the noodles, and then. I remember my mom came out with the hot water. It was like a water kettle. And then I think I said something that upset her. I don't remember what I said exactly. And she burned my face with the hot water kettle. And it left such a big scar on my face. And then I remember the next day we had family over. And I was so embarrassed. I was so ashamed of the scar on my face. And I but then I still had to go out and interact with them because I had to be polite, right? So imagine how traumatic that was for a little girl to go through, right? I said something that pissed my mom off and she burned my face with a hot water kettle. And then that told me 
that I shouldn't speak up, that I should just keep myself, keep my voice shut. So in a lot of ways, my mom had my voice my whole life. And then when I interact with a guy in a relationship who reminds me of my mom, right? My mom is very masculine, very dominating. Like anyone that I interact with who fits into the profile of my mom, I shift back into that powerless version of me, the, the version, the, the version of myself who doesn't speak up, who is afraid to talk or to share my thoughts and my um, opinion, that is who the guys get to experience when I go on dates. Um, so what I did to overcome this was I actually called my mom yesterday, I FaceTimed her, and I brought up that experience. I said, hey mom, do you remember doing this, you know, ages ago? And I didn't say it in a way that I was bl blaming her or yelling at her. Like, I don't have any emotional charge with that experience anymore, right? So I just brought it up. I'd be like, hey mom, do you remember doing this? And then she said, no. She had no memory of doing both of those two things. And she just really offered to me and be like, you know, Miko, it can get really stressful to raise three children and sometimes I would just act out of that stress, stressed out state. And I totally hear her, like I don't blame her, I don't shame her or anything like that. But it definitely felt like a huge weight lifted off my heart just by simply communicating. It, 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 it's almost like, you know, I had so much hesitation to, to even talk to her about that, to even bring that up with her because I was fearful that she would get mad at me again or to yell at me some more. All of that stories that our mind made it up to be, but it turns out to be such an easy conversation. We were able to really just open our hearts to each other and share with us like, hey, that's how I felt when that happened and then my mom shared with me what her childhood was like you know i asked her like hey mom did the grandma beat you up <laughs> did did she you know do certain things like that and you know my mom really said like she got beat up so many times that a lot of them she can't even remember and i'm sure it was because it was so traumatic that her brain kind of just shut it off and she can't access those memories. So I just felt nothing but compassion, nothing but love for my mom. And it was so powerful to be able to, to have that connection. It's almost like we carry such huge load of emotional baggage for 25 years of our life when we can simply just let it go by communicating that, by, by talking about it, by opening our heart and being vulnerable and just sharing with, the other person, how did that feel, right? So I felt like I definitely let go of a lot of that weight. And now that same space that was taking up on my heart, it's now space for me to receive more love, more intimacy, more joy, more abundance, because whatever is blocking your, your, your flow, whatever is sitting on your heart, that can be pain, frustration, anger, resentment, guilt, shame, whatever that is sitting on your heart right now, is also blocking you from receiving all that you want in life. The money, the relationship, the love, the happiness, it's blocking the flow. So do whatever you need to do, just like me, even though it was so scary, it was stretchy, I was uncomfortable bringing that up with my mom, but I did it anyways, because I'm not living life to be, you know, holding on to the emotional baggage from the past. I am living in this moment, clean, clean slate, no past baggages, and I get to fully live just in this moment as who I am. All right, so I hope this uh, resonated with some of you guys. Let me know what came up for you in the comments below and go ahead and share this with anyone that you know can absolutely benefit from listening to this. All right, guys, have an amazing day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.